Hey guys, welcome back. Well, maybe. If this is your first time on my channel, hi, my name's Alyssa. Nice to meet you. Shake, I don't know. For today's video, I thought it'd be fun to shove some of my personal favorite books down your guys' throats. Literally, not one person requested this video, but I'm gonna give it to you guys anyway. Sorry. You guys know the TikTok that's like, I got three looks and that's it? Because honestly, that is the perfect way to describe my book taste. All of the books I read can kind of fall under three categories, which is female rage, no plot, just vibes, but probably won't make you cry, and romance girly, to my core. We love the duality of a woman. So I think the first half of this video are going to be more like lit fic, sad, unhinged type of books, and then the second half is going to be more romance-ish books. Okay. So I can confidently say my favorite book of all time is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Probably comes to shock no one. If you follow me on Instagram, I tend to have a habit to show Sally Rooney and Normal People down everyone's throats. Sorry, not sorry. People tend to really either love or hate this book. I am definitely on the love side. Probably a little too much. So oh, if for some reason you guys don't know what this book is about, it pretty much follows our two main characters, Connell and Marianne, during their on-again, off-again type of relationship over a course of many years. I think the main reason why I love this book and so many other people do as well is because they tend to relate to one of the two characters. For me, I am a Connell girl. To my core. I relate to Connell way too much and that is kind of really exposing me saying this on the internet, but this might just be my cry for help. But if for some reason you have not read this book, just read it. Do it. Peer pressure. So the next book I want to talk about, I actually don't have a physical copy. Well, that's a lie. I had to. One, I dropped into a literal lake. Annotations and all. And the second one, I don't know where I put it. But the book I'm going to talk about is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. If there is one consistent thing about me that you guys should know is I will always eat up a dark academia book. I love them. There's just something so appealing to me when I read books that center around these like toxic friend groups and they all are awful people and so annoying and they have these like a moody New England icky weather backdrops. I, I just eat it up every time. This book is kind of like a knockoff of The Secret History, not gonna lie. I think I preferred this one just a little bit more though from The Secret History, even though, let's be real, The Secret History was and forever will be the blueprint of Dark Academia. I just really enjoy the Shakespeare aspect that is thrown into this book. I don't know, this book essentially follows our main character Oliver, who just got out of jail after being in it for 10 years for a crime he did not commit. When he is leaving, the detective on the case is like, listen, dude, I'm retiring. I don't really care anymore, but I just want to know what actually happened. And Oliver's like, okay, sure. And then he goes back and tells the story of what happened 10 years ago. And it's insane. Would not recommend this book, though, if you do not like Shakespeare, because it does take place at a Shakespeare acting academy. And they're all very into Shakespeare to the point where it's so annoying. Like they speak in to Shakespearean tongue. Is that a thing? I don't know. But you know, you get what I'm saying. If you don't like Shakespeare, probably don't read it. But I definitely recommend this book if you love dark academia books. The next book I'm going to talk about is one I enjoyed reading so much, but now that I'm saying that out loud, that kind of seems concerning. And that is <laughs> Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. Let me preface this by saying the main character in this book is awful. She is an awful human being. But I really did enjoy reading from her head. Do I support her? Not really, but it was very, very interesting. <laughs> Do not read this book if you really hate reading about unlikable, vile main characters, because that is Irina. Like, she sucks. So pretty much this book follows our main character, Irina, who is just like not happy with her life until she gets offered a coveted spot in this exhibit. For this exhibit, she decides to take explicit photos of, her words not mine, average looking men because they're easier to manipulate. Can you see where this is going? As she's taking these photos, she quickly spirals into absolute madness. This is definitely not a book for everyone, but I happen to love it. 
don't know what that says about me. Definitely do read this book though if you love books that depict female rage, unlikable characters, and unreliable narrators. The next one I'm going to talk about is actually a newer read for me and that is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. Yeah, by Meg Mason. <laughs> this one is for the girlies who have intrusive thoughts and constantly overanalyze their life and who are currently in their flea bag era. This book pretty much follows our main character Martha during multiple different parts of her life. Seemingly she has a great husband and she has no real reason to be sad, but she just isn't happy. Honestly, she just never really has for as long as she can remember. There's always been something that's kind of off inside of her that just makes her feel sad all the time. She doesn't really know what's wrong with her and especially the people around her don't either. A lot of the time the people in her life think she's choosing to feel this way when obviously that is not the case. So the bulk of the story is her journey of trying to seek a diagnosis and how that affects her and the people around her. Did not expect to resonate with a lot of aspects of Martha's character but I did. The aspect of this book I really did love is how the author dealt with mental illness. I felt like it was a very honest and true depiction of it. Fleabag girlies, please read this. So the next book I want to talk about, I don't know why I'm getting nervous already thinking about trying to describe this one, but that is Night Bitch. It's something. So um, where do I even begin to describe this book? It's about a woman, a mother to be exact, and um, she thinks she's turning into a literal dog. Like a wolf, like a, like a dog. This is like really exposing my book taste. Like, oh, listen, what's your favorite book? A book about a girl who thinks she's a dog. Yep. I read this book in one sitting and honestly, I had a question if I even read it. It feels like the biggest fever dream of a book. The one word I would use to describe this book is feral. If you know, you know. So I think this book is honestly best to go into blind, but if you do want to know a little bit more about it, it follows a mother who is just so over her life. She is so over her husband, her kids. And she just snaps. And honestly, I'm surprised more mothers don't snap in this way because motherhood, kids, not really for me. The husband, so ungrateful. The kid, so ungrateful. I could not. Like, I was like, go off, girl. You do you. She seemed happy. This book is a amazing depiction of female rage. Totally read it, but I'm warning, it is very weird. Probably not for everyone. But it is fun. So, look into it. So the next book I'm going to talk about, I do not recommend, like so seriously do not recommend to read, but it is one of my favorites, so I had to put it in this video, and that is A Little Life. I honestly would not wish this book on my worst enemy. The book is so much to deal with, and I honestly do not recommend to read it. And if you do, please read all the trigger warnings ahead of time because there's a lot and it's very, very, very intense. Literally, this was my face the entire time while reading this book. I have never cried more in my life than I have when I read this book. I was a mess. I was a mess and not in like a quirky or I'm crying way. I mean, like I literally felt a pit of doom in my stomach for weeks. If you don't know what this book is about, it pretty much follows four college best friends throughout years of their life. You see their careers, their friendship grows, their relationships, but it all is tied down mainly to one of their friends, Jude. I feel like I can cry just thinking about this book again, but I love Jude so much. That's all I'm gonna say. That's... don't read this book. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is one of my favorite favorite authors, and that is My Year Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshpeg. I love Otessa. I eat up everything she writes. She just writes characters in such a raw... are my lights flickering? If I had to choose a favorite, I think it would be this one or Eileen. This book pretty much follows an unnamed narrator in New York City during the year 2000. She's rich, she's beautiful, she's annoying, and she's very depressed. She just feels so drained of life. She cannot talk to anyone. She doesn't want to deal with anyone. She doesn't want to work. So she takes it upon herself to have her own year of rest and relaxation. Pretty much she gets her therapist to prescribe a bunch of meds to her and she thinks it's a great idea if she can just take the year off and sleep for a whole year. This book is a very interesting take on depression and mental health. I never read anything like it. A lot of the time people think it's a book about sleeping for a year but it's about how she survives during the moment she is awake. I think everyone can relate a little bit to this book because of course everyone has days where they are just so over life and they want to go to bed and not wake up. 
This book is definitely, again, not for everyone, but if it does sound interesting to you, I definitely recommend trying it out, or honestly, any of Otessa's books, but I think this is a good place to start. So the next book I absolutely love, well, duh, I love all these books, but it is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. The way I cannot wait for this man's next book, I believe it comes out in the summer or spring. It's called Small Worlds. Like, I am, I am fully sat. This pretty much follows the relationship of these two people who meet at a club and their relationship and their bond is so beautiful. One's a photographer, one's a dancer, and just the way they talk about art and love in this book is so profound. Romance in this book is mm, so good. So good. This book explores so many important topics such as, such as navigating one's identity versus how the world might perceive you to race and police brutality, to nature of masculinity, to just falling in love for the first time. This book is everything. Open Water is absolutely amazing. Please read it. It's for everyone. I'm not even mad if you don't read it, so go do it. Okay, I think those are all like the literary fiction-ish books I want to talk about. On to romance. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to be so for real with you. Um, it's like over a week later since the last bit was filmed. I was on a plane and I went to, you know, like, edit my video. I was like, yeah, this is great. I'm going to post weekly. Let me know why I'm on my little computer and the footage, like, isn't there. I don't know what happened to it. I could not tell you what happened to it. <laughs> so I'm back now from my trip, and we're just going to try it again where I think it left off. Maybe. Hopefully. So the first one I'm going to talk about is a more recent favorite, and that is You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle. Hogle, yeah. Guys, I love this one, like, so much, and I honestly did not expect that. So fun fact about this was I tried to read this book two times before, and I got, like, ten pages in, and I was like, no. Like, no, not for me. Cannot be for me. Don't understand why it's so popular. I don't know what I was thinking before when I didn't like this book, because it is such, like, a romp. It is really popular, but if you don't know what it is, it pretty much follows our main character, Naomi, who is engaged to Nicholas. Okay, that was really rude. Oh, okay. So, as I was trying to say, this book follows our main character, Naomi, and she's engaged to this guy named Nicholas. At the beginning of the relationship, she was, like, head over heels in love with him, but she wasn't really showing him, like, honestly, her true self. And now, in current day, she is so... So, so over him, like, hates his guts, wants nothing to do with him, wants out of the marriage. But the catch is there is a non refundable wedding bill that she doesn't want to put. So she's like, you know what? Let me try to make this man hate me, and then he could end the marriage, and I can get out happy and not pay a dime. So she starts doing all these things that she thinks, like, is going to make him want to dip out. But obviously, he just starts to love her even more. And, like, it's a romance. You know what happens. So if you want, like, a very funny, get you out of, like, a reading slump type of romance, this one is for you. It also has the second chance um, trope in it. So, like, you can't go wrong. So the next book I'm going to talk about, I just reread on the said plane ride so I can confirm it's still one of my favorite books and that is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is an Emily Henry stan account and if you don't like Emily Henry or you haven't read an Emily Henry yet, why? Oh my god, I seriously love all her books so deeply and I consistently go back and forth between what one's my favorite but I think it might be this one? I don't know. I feel like some people say this is like their least favorite Emily Henry book because they think Poppy's annoying, which is like kind of rude because I feel like I am Poppy. So thanks. If I am not in a Connell mood. I am definitely in a Poppy mood. You just never know what you're going to get with me. So for nurse, this book follows Poppy and Alex. They meet in college and then we kind of become friends, even though they're complete opposites. But every year they take a vacation together. This book has dual timelines. So you see like every vacation they took together throughout the years. And then you also see current day where they don't talk anymore. And it kind of leads up to why they don't talk. A few years later, they still don't talk and Poppy really misses Alex. So she hits him up and like, hey, bestie, remember me. Do you want to take another vacation together? And he says, yeah. Kind of like follows that timeline and then their past timeline and it's like friends to lovers trope. I have a love for traveling. This book is really great. I think that's why it is my favorite. I also reread it um when I was on the plane and I was supposed to be editing 
that didn't happen but I made it kind of like a journal which is so deep I'm not going to show you but I made it a journal and I kind of like annotated it for this whole trip blah 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 and it's like cute and now every time I reread it I'm gonna have like these memories of the trip that I went on with like the book and I think it's just gonna be so perfect so the next book is definitely a, like a love story and a romance but it's way more deep than the other books I'm gonna talk about and that is Alone With You in the Ether. Ether? Ether. Ether. I don't know hold on like why am I literally second guessing my life right now? I don't know. Ether. Did I say that? I don't know. Also guys this is such a niche flex but I have the original cover which if you know, you know. This book is definitely a love story at its core, but there's so much more depth to it. It deals a lot with mental health, and I think in a really good way. I just love all of these minds and her work and everything about her. All her words are so beautiful. There's so many amazing quotes in this book. I feel like Aldo and Reagan in this book have such a, like a soulmate bond, a connection that you can really see while you're reading it. It kind of almost reminds me of normal people in the sense of like, their bond not like the actual storyline in normal people I think for a romance that's like not a rom-com or like cringy <laughs> at all and you want like a more deeper book i recommend this one okay so the next book i'm going to talk about is way more rom-com rompy vibes and that is actor h e brown by talia hibbert eve is such a fun character to read about she is like a certified hot mess she's just kind of like floating through life vibing doing her own thing her parents are literally so dumb with her they're like eve we love you but like you need to get your act together eve sets up to find a new job and she happens to find a chef position at this like kind of bed and breakfast in place that's where we meet jacob he owns it and jacob takes one look at her and he's like no like not gonna happen but on the way out of the interview eve accidentally or like so she says hits jacob with her car and she's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. You have to let me work here and help you now. So Jacob reluctantly accepts her help and the story kind of unfolds from there. It has tropes like grumpy sunshine and enemies to lovers sort of-ish. Like, it is such a fun time. I love everything about this book. I love Eve. I love her growth in it. I love what Eve and Jacob kind of like bring out in each other. So if you're looking for like a good new romance or like a romance series to read, I highly recommend this one. It is just like... A fun time. Okay, so the last book I'm gonna actually talk about is Before We Were Strangers by Carly Brene, Brene Carlo, Carline, Colino. Yeah, Brene Carlino. It's not that hard. Honestly, I love this book so, so much. Just for the vibes alone, part of it takes place in the 90s in New York City. Two NYU students meet in like the dorms and they strike up like this instant kind of bond and relationship that can chance romance so obviously like something happens to them you don't really know what and they don't talk for 15 12 15 years 15 that's a lot okay wow they happen to bump into each other all these years later on a subway in new york and you can guess what happens from there if you like normal people i feel like you'll like this one too it's just like a little bit more romancy and way less depressing but definitely check this one out. <laughs> okay, I think that is it for today's video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me in the future. You probably don't, but please subscribe. Also follow me on my Instagram, Hawker Literature, because I think one of my next few videos is going to involve Instagram in some way. So if you want to be involved, follow me on there. I think we're done now. I'm going to go. Bye, guys. <coughs> Dying dying.